my name is Danica and I'm a contributing editor at Book Riot and today I want to talk about my top five books you've never heard of. I love the bookish internet but sometimes it can become a weird echo chamber where I feel like I'm hearing about the same books over and over again. And jumping on the bandwagon of a really hyped book can be fun. I love discussing books with other people but I also really enjoy finding books that not a lot of people are talking about. There's an appeal of finding hidden gems especially if you can then champion that book and talk to other people and try to convince them to read it. The sad truth is that most of the books that get talked about the most also had the most publicity money. There are plenty of books that deserve more attention that didn't get the same marketing budget. So I wanted to talk about some of the hidden gems that are my favorites. My line for this video is going to be books that have under 100 ratings on Goodreads. I invite you to go to your Goodreads account if you have one and sort by number of ratings and find out what your top five would be. I to show you how you can find out which books you've read had the fewest Goodreads ratings. So obviously I'm already on Goodreads and I go into my books and then I'm going to make sure that I am on my red bookshelf and then from there I'm going to go to this bottom bar here and I'm going to do sort by and then find where it says number of rating and click that and it will update and then I'm going to do ascending. So I'm starting with the least number of ratings. And from here, it's now completely sorted by number of ratings. So this is how many people on Goodreads have not only read this book, but rated it. It doesn't include reviews. So usually there's a lot fewer reviews. So you can see these are some of the books that I've read where I was the only one who has ever rated it on Goodreads. And it keeps ascending. You have infinite scroll on and it'll depend how obscure your taste in books is for how many books you have that are under 100 ratings or under 500 ratings. I read a lot of queer books and I get sent a lot of books to review so I have quite a few books that are under 500 ratings because they were self-published and sent for review or because they're obscure in other ways. A lot of queer books don't get the same sort of publicity so you can see I've got a pretty big selection that are all under 500 ratings. 500 ratings is still a pretty good marker. If we go into descending, you can see that the most popular books I've read have 2 million ratings. And even books that I feel like are pretty obscure, so Teach Like Finland or Neptune Noir, which is a book of essays about Veronica Mars, they all have easily double that amount. So I think 500 is still a pretty good cutoff. I think most people's read books are usually going to be over 500 ratings. So that's how you can find out your own little known books that you've read and please leave those in the comments so I can take a look at what some of your favorites are. These are all different genres so it's going to be kind of an eclectic list. My first pick is a picture book called 47,000 Beads. This is an own voices two-spirit picture book which I think is the first of its kind. I'm really hoping that I'm wrong there and there are other two-spirit own voices kids books. This is the only one that I've heard of. This was published by Flamingo Press who does amazing work with inclusive queer picture books. They always include different races, religions, and disabled characters as well. 47,000 Beads is about Peyton who has stopped dancing at powwows because she doesn't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Her family recognizes the struggle in her and they come together to make her a gift to show what being two-spirit is and that they appreciate her. They also introduce her to a two-spirit adult in the community to kind of be her mentor. This has beautiful illustrations and it's so needed and I really think it should be in every elementary school library, every public library. I highly recommend you check this out. Next up is one of my favorite books which is Hero Worship by Rebecca Matthews. This is the most painfully relatable book that I've ever read. It's about Valerie who is 20 something and she's trying to figure herself out after a string of bad relationships. She's writing letters to her ex-girlfriend to try to deal with how much she misses her even though she's not sure if her ex girlfriend ever really liked her at all. Valerie's desperate need for love and attention made me just wince sympathetically at every page. I was torn between wanting to keep reading and having to frequently put the book down because I just empathize so much with Valerie. I would recommend this to anyone who's ever felt like they needed someone too much or if you just want to be submerged in someone else's sense of self. Next I wanted to talk about a memoir called The Family Tooth by Ellis Avery. As soon as I finished The Last Nude by Ellis Avery I 
I immediately added her to my list of favorite authors, even though I'd only ever read one book by her. The Family Tooth is a very different kind of book, but it definitely helped to secure her spot on that list. This is a memoir made up of linked essays. Some of them are available as Kindle singles, or I believe you can still get the whole book on the author's Etsy page in kind of a zine style. At first glance, they can seem disconnected, but I think they really benefit from being read back to back. They deal with her grief at losing her mother, as well as her journey dealing with extreme arthritis and later cancer, and how she dealt with that by severely restricting her diet. She somehow manages to interweave all these things and find connections between them in a really profound way. Grief memoirs and illness memoirs are not usually something I would gravitate towards, but I will continue to pick up anything that she ever writes. On to a YA novel, In the Silences by Rachel Gold, which is primarily a book about whiteness, although it also deals with the main character coming out as non-binary. Kaz is figuring out their gender, and they are also in love with Aisha, who is a black bisexual teen girl in a mostly white town. This really explores the day-to-day -day realities of her life, dealing with microaggressions and just unrelenting racism. Aisha and Kaz are able to find some solidarity with how their experiences are erased, but also recognizing how different their experiences are. I really liked how much this book is about them both working to be allies to each other. I feel like what the book Not My Idea, a book about whiteness, does for small children, this book does for teens. I still haven't found a lot of books like these two that recognize that it is white people's responsibility to learn about racism and to fight it within their own communities, and especially to educate each other. This is much needed, and I hope it finds its way into the hands of people who need it. And finally, A Mystery, which is a genre I don't usually read a lot of, and this is Stolen by Linda J. Wright. I will fully admit to being biased here, this is a mystery for animal lovers, it's about pets that are being stolen, and it's also set in my hometown, it's set on Vancouver Island. The mystery is engaging and well-paced, I really appreciated the characterization in this novel. If you're an animal lover, do be aware that this book does address animal cruelty. There are some rough scenes. I do have a bit of a quibble that I would like to read the next book in the series if just to figure out. There's a character near the end of the book who is a kid of indeterminate gender. It seems to be kind of implying that maybe this kid is trans, but the description is a little bit weird and I'm not sure about the representation there. They're only in the book for a very short period of time, so I'd be interested to see how this character develops later in the series. Overall though, the combination of a setting I love and the loving attention spent on the animals made this an easy win for me. So those were my top five books under 100 ratings that I love. If you're interested in finding more little known gems, definitely check out Book Riot's recurring series, The Best Books You've Never Heard Of. I also made a YouTube tag, so there should be a few other videos floating around of people's recommendations. Let me know what your favorite little known books are, and I mean truly little known, like under 500 Goodreads ratings. Also let me know if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. I have a lot more books that I could talk about that are under 500 Goodreads ratings that I really love, so I would be happy to do more videos if you like this sort of thing. Let me know in the comments, and thank you for watching!